If I mention California wine, your mind might wonder here to the beautiful and world famous Napa Valley. Napa is a 30 mile long, $50 billion a year industry of some of the world's most valuable wine businesses. Not only is Napa Valley home to some iconic producers, it's become a magnet for high spending tourists. No, I can't do that. Many wineries throw open their doors to visitors like me and Amelia. Some, like Raymond, with its burlesque themed crystal cellar. There's mannequins. Big crystal. <laughs> Even let you play winemaker for the day. Should we get on with it? Oh, yeah, sure. Come on then. Chunk of Merlot in there. Oh, oh, blah. Great wines and novel experiences like this. I like the cab from coming out of it all add up to make Napa one of the most magical wine destinations in the world. But behind the walls of the Magic Kingdom, there's another side to California wine. Issues like drought, traffic, sustainability, all challenge winemakers. But there's one issue that threatens their very existence. In California, a high percentage of agricultural workers are undocumented migrants. The allure of working on marijuana plantations where the pay is better and the job much easier has created a serious labour shortage. While Napa has the wealth and often the machinery to ride out this shortage, the problem is particularly acute in the less well-known wine regions like Mendocino County. Family-run Barra Winery in Redwood has been feeling the effects. But owner Martha Barra has found a solution with a little help from the law in the form of Sheriff Tom Ullman. Hello, Tom. Hi. Hello. Together, they've pioneered a scheme to use prisoners from the county jail to work in her vineyard. How did it come together, this thing of you as a, as a sheriff and then Martha as a wine producer? What was the genesis of that? So we were talking over a glass of wine. <laughs> And I said, Martha, listen, it's almost time for the grapes to be picked. Why don't we, as in the sheriff's office, supply you with a dozen pickers, you pay them a fair wage, and that money will go to them and their families, and at the end of the picking season, they'll have money, you'll have your grapes picked, and uh, maybe it'll work out to where these guys are not gonna come back to jail. And the first year we started as a whim, and, and it was a trial year, saying, all right, Martha, if this works, we might try it again. If it doesn't work, we'll wash our hands of it and say, boy, that was a dumb idea. <laughs> but it has worked so good that I now have three other sheriffs who are doing, this year will be their first year doing the exact same thing. No way. Cool, what's your favorite wine from Mendocino? Uh, the darker, the better, <laughs> really and truly. If you can hold it up to the sun, and you can't see the sun through the bottle, that's a perfect red wine right there. <laughs> so this is Martha's Winery. Here we oh, are. fantastic. Over the past 20 years, as Californian wine has grown in popularity, the 175-acre Barra Estate has gone from producing 200 to 20,000 cases a year. Without a ready supply of workers, there's no way Martha could grow her business. But I have to ask, surely it's a massive risk taking on convicted prisoners. Did you ever have, have a distaste, though, about taking prisoners, you know, people who've broken the law, and having them in your vineyard? You know, I trusted the sheriff to vet these people and there are 300 people in the jail, and when he can only send us four or six, that tells me they have gone through a rigorous process to be able to do this, and it's an honor for them to do that. So you feel safe? I feel safe, and I know that they're not going to leave because they pay $11 a day for a little ankle bracelet that's GPS controlled, and they're not going to do anything because they want out. They don't want to twiddle their thumbs during the day, sitting in jail. So I felt very safe with those people. Right now, it's suckering season, apart from harvest, one of the busiest times of the year. 
and to cope with the workload, Martha's drafted in extra labour from the prison to help. How are you doing? Good to meet you. I'm Preston. Nice to meet you, Preston. Great to meet you, too. You're getting stuck in here. Oh, man. Yeah, just uh, picking off the sucklings, the little sucker branches. Is this your first time working in a It bit? is. What kind of skills are you learning, do you think? Learning how to take off these um, sucklings. Um, this is the spur. And um, on the spur, this is where your new buds and your new blossoms are coming about. And um, so I'm taking off the smaller ones that are less important so that these more established ones have a chance to really produce some fruit. So something like up here, this, yeah, this, this would, can come off. That would need to go. But generally, you know, we're leaving two to three. What did you have to do to get on the program to come to, to the vineyard? Well, um, like I said, I've been in jail for 17 months now and I've not been in a lick of trouble or nothing like that. And I'm, I feel like uh, I'm pretty trustworthy. Out here, this is uh, nice and free and open. Yeah. Is there not a temptation just to leg it? Um, if I were to do something foolish like that, I'd be setting myself back to the beginning. Yeah. I'm enjoying myself. I've even told them if they need a helping hand in the future to come and get me. In fact, rather than legging it, Joe, some, like Jaime, have come back to work at Martha's full time. We're going into to jail and coming out, I thought I, when I was coming out, I wasn't going to have any opportunities. I was kind of down in the rut, you know what I mean? I was just, I was on the streets, and then when she gave me the opportunity to work, I was just yeah. like, this is what I want to do. I, I don't want to keep doing circles and going back to jail. And do you think she'll hire more people full time? Um, definitely, just because when harvest season comes around, there's there's a lot of workers that that just go just to go work with the weed. So it's like, there's so much work to do out here with all these grapes. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like coming out for the day? <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. I mean, it feels like you're free almost. It's hot and it's hard work, but if you can deal with that, you feel like you've accomplished something at the end of the day, that's for sure. How important is the money? Because you, you're paid for this. Really, I'd, I'd do it for free, you know? I'd, I'd pay to come <laughs> to out come and out do out this, you know? This was a program that was kind of forced on you. You had to do it economically. <laughs> but you've left the most amazing legacy, chatting to those guys. How do you feel when you look at what you've achieved? It delights me to see them so ready to come to work in the, in the mornings and be happy to be out and so appreciative that we're giving them that opportunity. And does that make me feel good? When I sign their check, I feel very good. Tom and Martha's novel program could one day be the blueprint for producers across the whole of California. I can't see why not. It's win-win for the vineyards and the prisoners. One thing's for sure, I'll never look at a bottle of Mendocino wine in quite the same way again. <laughs>